Real estate is great, but there are some things that I wish I knew before I entered the industry. Let's talk about them. Hey, what's up? My name is Vaina Jarabek. I am a third year real estate agent here in Seattle, Washington. I started in the business when I was 18 years old and having found a lot of success, I started this channel to share my experiences and give you some tips and tricks on starting your real estate journey. So thanks so much for tuning in. If this video turns out to be helpful for you, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe so we can keep talking about real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so some of my most asked questions as a popular real estate agent, influencer, whatever, are, is real estate worth it? What tips and advice do you have for getting into the industry? How can I get started in real estate, etc.? And I've got quite a few videos now about how to get started into real estate. This video, I really wanna dial into what are the pros and cons of the industry? And what did I wish I knew before I got that license? So starting off, number one, the real estate course does not teach you how to sell. Now this is the one I wanna highlight the most. That's why it's number one. Before you even think about paying for that real estate course, because it can be kind of costly in some states. Nothing compared to college tuition, but that's another video. And I see people sign up for the real estate course because they think it's gonna teach them about real estate. Let me just say, the real estate course does not teach you how to sell real estate. The real estate course teaches you laws, ethics, um, how many square foot are in an acre. Doesn't teach you how to get leads, how to work with clients, how to write contracts, how to negotiate. It really doesn't teach you the fundamental skills you need to actually become a successful real estate agent. And this, my friends, is why real estate agents have a really bad reputation. There is an extremely low barrier to entry in this industry. So we have a lot of poorly trained agents making the top 1% of agents look bad. And if you don't know, 10% of agents do 90% of the work. This is because there are a lot of agents who became real estate agents because they thought it was easy and then they quit. So really a small portion of real estate agents are doing a majority of the work. And that portion are the ones who really stuck through, got down and learned these fundamental skills and are serving their market with real professionalism and skills. So that's number one, real estate course, it doesn't teach you how to sell. If you want to learn about real estate, do not take the online course for your state. Get on YouTube. Honestly, Selling Sunset is gonna teach you more than, about real estate than the real estate course, just barely. But um, YouTube books, like um, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent is a pretty good book on what it actually takes to become a real estate agent. Yeah, podcasts are really good too. But just don't expect that real estate course to teach you how to sell. Get through that course as fast as you can, take your test and go sign up with a really good brokerage who's gonna train you well. Number one, all right. Number two, the average agent changes brokerages four times before finding the right one for them. Now my brokerage is a family business, so I'm staying loyal to the soil here. But what I see from my friends who became agents is that they get so stuck on finding the right brokerage or picking a brokerage even and it really stops them up and it distracts them from why they actually became a real estate agent to help clients and serve their market. And what I really want to say is that in the end, the brokerage you work for does not matter when it comes to how you create an experience for your clients, which is really what being a real estate agent is. You're serving buyers and sellers, right? And the brokerage that you hang your license under, the name on the sign of your office doesn't interact with your clients. So my advice on this one is if you're stuck between brokerages, and I think I have a video on picking a brokerage, please just go with your gut and pick one. Get into real estate, start actually working real estate instead of debating picking a brokerage and see what works for you at the brokerage and what doesn't. And if it works for you, stay. If it doesn't, explore your options, but you're not gonna know what you like until you start working in real estate and you can't start working in real estate until you're under a brokerage. You get what I'm saying? So that's number two. Number three, now I probably did know this before I became a real estate agent, but you don't make money right away when you start as a real estate agent, definitely not. I think at this point, people who are actually seriously considering getting into real estate have heard that you might not make money for six months, 12 months even, and it really does depend. Personally, it took me the average for agents, which is six months to cut a check. It took me six months to get my first deal. I was living at home. I was just shadowing other agents in my brokerage the whole time, being consistent with my prospecting. And eventually I worked my way up to getting that deal. And I would say that's pretty typical. I have seen agents make money on day one. I've seen agents quit after two years because they couldn't cut a check. What I think the difference is, is your dedication to being consistent with working on your skills. So when you start up in real estate, you should be every single day reading books, watching YouTube videos, doing coaching, using coaching resources and prospecting. That is what you should do every day for six months. And if you are seriously taking action and working on those skills, which are basically prospecting, follow-up and negotiation, 
you should be making money in 90 days. The standard for my team is if you are working in real estate for three hours a day for 90 days, you are gonna make money. We have proven that. Very big shout out to Mike Ferry. His bobblehead is right there. <laughs> Mike Ferry invented real estate coaching like 50 years ago and he preaches the fundamentals of skills in real estate. He has a YouTube channel, he has coaching. I highly recommend that. I personally coach with Tom Ferry's company, but I still go to Mike Ferry events and I love Mike Ferry because he is totally like by the book, traditional prospecting skills. And I think that is so important for new agents instead of getting caught up with all the new stuff of social media and marketing. I'm a proponent of learning how to prospect first, getting into the dirt and cold calling people and knocking on doors and then following that up with great marketing. So that's number three, you don't make money right away. <laughs> I don't wanna make this video too long, so let's go. Number four, the money you make depends on the work you put in. So kind of correlates to number three. A Mike Ferry quote, the amount of money you make is directly correlated to the level of service you bring to the market or something like that. It's basically, I think he just says the amount of money you make is directly correlated to how hard you work. And that's true. Like I said, you could be in real estate, but barely doing anything. And no, you're not going to make money. But if you're in real estate, you've got your license and you are actually working hard three to eight hours a day in real estate, you are gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> when I started in real estate, I was full-time and it did take me six months of full-time, but since then my business has like skyrocketed and it's doing amazing. And I work pretty hard. So the amount of money you make is dependent on the work you put in. Okay, number five. So here's one. Real estate can be a very high stress industry. Now this is something that can be controlled, but I think especially if you're working on several transactions and there's things going wrong left and right and you might feel responsible for what happens to your client, then it can be highly stressful sometimes we work on really tight deadlines we have to get things done there are a lot of situations where there's uncertainty and we don't know what's gonna happen like we don't find out about an offer until two days from now and we're up against 10 different people it can be pretty high stress what I've learned is that it can help to emotionally detach from your business and and realize that a lot of the things we do is actually out of our control so it's a lot of personally induced stress and like I said that can be controlled so that's just something to know number six of what I knew before I became a real estate agent being an agent i actually wrote these a while ago i said being an agent can be like being a full-time waiter so i actually got this from one of my mentors he says we are basically just glorified waiters or even babysitters because a lot of the time especially when you're working with like buyers you are on call for these buyers to show houses write offers go to inspections negotiate deals and it can feel like you're running around a lot so kind of you know in with the stress thing but yeah, I mean, and it's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but sometimes being a real estate agent is a lot like being a waiter. <laughs> you basically answer to a lot of people. Ooh, number seven, this is a good one. If you have a business plan, your daily schedule becomes easy to manage. We'll call this seven and eight. You need a business plan when you're becoming a real estate agent. There are, Tom Ferry has a great business plan template and it basically just looks like, what are your goals? What do you need to get there? What are you gonna do weekly, monthly, and daily to achieve those goals? And so what's your daily schedule gonna look like? So so let's say my goal is to make half a million dollars this year, which it is. I'm gonna sell roughly 25 houses to make half a million dollars in Seattle. And I know I need to call this many people in this much time to create this many appointments to close X percentage of those appointments and ultimately sell 25 houses. So in my business plan, I calculate all that out. How many calls does it take me to set an appointment? How many appointments does it take me to sign a listing? And then I divide that call number by the working days. That's how many people I need to call per day. And then I look at my daily schedule. Where does that go in my daily schedule where I can be consistent and make those calls every single working day? For me, that's Monday through Friday. I like to take weekends off. I've worked up to the point where I can manage my schedule a lot better and take weekends off. It didn't start out that way, but yes, you can manage your own schedule. <laughs> so if you have a business plan, and my business plan isn't just how many calls do I need to make, but at this point, it's also how many videos do I need to make per week? How many ads do I need to run monthly? How many pieces of direct mail do I need to send out per month? And that's all in my business plan encapsulated and the small portions of those goes into my daily schedule to ultimately create the result at the end of the year. So number seven, need the business plan. Number eight, when you have the business plan, your daily schedule is a lot easier to manage because it's, it's basically like a map, really. It's a plan business plan. <laughs> All right, number nine. Ooh, in real estate, you talk to a lot of strangers. Now I, and I think a lot of new agents underestimate this. When you get into real estate, remember the last point, how I was just talking about, I need to talk to this many people to set this many appointments. 
yeah, all those people are strangers in my case. Now, it is important as a real estate agent to prospect on the people you know, you know, checking in with your network and letting them know you're in real estate and that you can help them with their needs. But really, when it comes to creating new and consistent business, what's bigger, the amount of people you know or the amount of people you don't know? Surprise, surprise, it's the amount of people you don't know. <laughs> so. So you end up talking to a lot of people you don't know. And not only when you're prospecting on people, but of course other agents and lenders and inspectors and escrow companies. You talk to a lot of people just in general on a daily basis, but ultimately you are talking to a lot of strangers in real estate. And I think the most nerve wracking thing when you hear talking to strangers is the potential rejection from something like cold calling. But really, that's part of the business. That's how we make money. We talk to strangers and we get rejected. Isn't that crazy? I had an intern one time, <laughs> one of my very first interns, when I told him at the beginning of his training that he was gonna talk to a lot of strangers and he was gonna deal with a lot of rejection, but you only need one person to say yes to get that deal. He was like, I get rejected by girls all the time. Now you're telling me I get to get paid for it? <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, anyways, okay. Last thing for this video. Number 10, um, communication goes a long way when it comes to your clients and with other agents. Now, remember in the beginning of this video when I was talking about how there's a very low barrier of entry into real estate, which means we have a lot of poorly trained agents. Well, sometimes when you're forced to work with one of these poorly trained agents for the sake of your client and the house they're buying or selling, they might try to put you in some challenging situations. They might try to test you and be B words. It's hard to describe, <laughs> but, but having very good communication skills and empathy with these agents, um, <laughs> will go a long way for you. So basically, once you become a really great real estate agent, you will need to deal with people who aren't as good. And I'm not talking about people who don't know what they're doing, more so people who are purposely unprofessional and these people do exist. And so for the sake of your clients, it's really important to be able to know how to handle these situations. So, so I guess what I'm saying is be prepared. I read a few really good books that kind of primed me for these situations. Anything by Vanessa Van Edwards, honestly. Her books Captivate and then her new one Cues are really great. And then honestly, like it's not even real estate related, but Mark Manson's The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F Word. These two books, I swear, like, they raise your IQ. You will look at the world so differently once you read these books, you become a lot more impartial, you become a lot more mature, I would say, and dealing with people becomes a lot easier. So just read those books and then you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So those are my 10 things that I wish I knew before becoming a real estate agent. I wanna say that these are kind of outside the conventional advice that I usually give because I wanted to make this kind of a different video and really reflect on my actual real experiences in the industry. I wanna keep doing videos like this and include a lot more stories to give you guys like real examples of you know what I'm talking about. Just in case this video sounded a little vague, but please, please, please let me know in the comments what your questions are around this. Let's connect on socials. I am on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I'm on everything. So again, if this video was helpful, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. Like you made it this far, you know what I'm saying? So thanks for that and I will see you in the next video.